morning. This is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. Let's have a book chat. It's been a while since I checked in. I've read a number of very good books since the last time I checked in with you. And so let's just skip the preliminaries and get started right away. The first book I want to talk about is called Good Faith by Jane Smiley. This was a reread. I read it when it first came out. I remember liking it. My memory of this first book is that it was funny and quirky and Upon rereading, it was neither funny nor quirky. It was, but it was a uh, very masculine. It was written by Jane Smiley, and it was written in the perspective of a real estate agent named Joe. And his backstory is that he had a love of his life when he was in high school, and he loved her very much, and she was killed in a car accident. He's kind of adopted by this family, in a sense, uh, his parents are very religious, and he pulls away from that organized religion into the embrace of this family that had been the parents and siblings of the girl that he loved. And he becomes a real estate agent, and they help him. They're the rich family in town and developers, real estate developers. And they help him establish his career, and he's allowed to sell some of their properties. And he's kind of an adopted son, in a sense, into this family. And then he starts having an affair with a married daughter from the family. And aside from that, the rest of the novel is about all about the savings and loan buildup and what happened to farmers and people in town and landowners as savings and loans are afforded a lot more freedoms and deregulation and what happens when he gets sucked into a very bad real estate deal by a interloper who a person who comes into the town to set up this deal so it's about male friendship it's about infidelity if that's a red flag for you it's about it the character is very masculine and I do, and I, you do end up really liking him, is a product of his time. So uh, it was, I was so happy that I reread it. It makes me want to read more Jane Smiley. And in fact, it inspired me to read the first novel in her American history series called Some Luck by Jane Smiley. And it was written a few years ago. There are three books in the series. This is the first novel. And each chapter in Some Luck takes place over the course of a year. In starting in 1900. It's about the entire 20th century told through the characters in a particular family that are farmers. Each chapter is written in the perspective of one character primarily, but then you see what's happening to the other characters also just through the eyes of this central character per chapter, if that makes sense, per year. So I think it goes up from 1900 to 1953 in the first novel, and I could not put it down. I thought it was so interesting to see what happens when people get religious or lose their faith or have severe, a Great Depression it causes a lot of uh, anxiety, economic anxiety in the family. And then you have one son who is very smart and he's very rebe rebellious and he wants to get have nothing to do with his family. Uh, I really liked it. I am definitely going to finish with the trilogy and read the rest, read the rest of those books. Jane Smiley is so good at capturing a kind of Americana. She definitely doesn't speak for any voices other than white, mostly white farmer, rural families. Um, but land is very important. And so even if you don't like what the families are doing, or you don't like uh, farm culture or reading books about that kind of thing. I mean, it is a part of what made us who we are today for the good and for the bad. Anyway, highly recommended. I read a debut novel that's coming of age set in the 1980s called The Crooked Tree. And this is um, about a very dysfunctional family in the 1980s in rural Pennsylvania. So I think it's an Appalachian, it could be considered an Appalachian novel. There's definitely a class divide in the town. There's definitely economic insecurity. And in this family, there are a number of children um, ranging in age from about 18 to um, I think about five. And 
The mother is clearly an, in the throes of a severe depression and she stays in her room almost all the time. She has very little to do with the comings and goings of her children. And one day they are driving and she is, the mother is driving and she gets very irritated with the 12 year old girl who is kind of whining about not getting to go to art camp because she's been recommended to go to art camp. And the mother gets so mad and so frustrated and so like unhinged that she stops the car and makes the little girl, the 12 year old get out of the car and it's nighttime and tells her she has to walk home. And so that is the inciting incident incident in the novel from which everything else happens. The novel is set in the perspective of, of the 15 year old. And so she's telling the story as she sees it and her responsibility for taking care of her 12 year old sister once the inciting incidents are incident occurs. And it's all, it's about sexual awakening. It's about reconciling with the death of a parent and with the dysfunction of a parent. It's definitely a debut novel. It's not completely formed, but I really liked it. And I think this author has a lot to say and she could really take, take her writing to the next level. And I'm anxious to see what she writes next. Remember the booktube spin? I did actually read my booktube spin, which was The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. And um, it was very funny. It was written definitely breaking the fourth wall the whole time the narrator is breaking the fourth wall making little jokes about the characters talking to the reader as though the reader is sitting right there in the room with the narrator and it's about um religion architecture um jealous jealousy passion classism uh racism against uh romani people and exoticizing them and um, and also about deformity and about um, ableism. So if you were putting a lens of how we look at uh, disadvantaged people in different ways now, this, no this novel definitely wouldn't pass any tests because all of the otherness of the characters is amplified and kind of exoticized. It's not, but it is humanized in a sense to um, it's not any, the novel is not anything what I thought it was going to be. And, uh, but it was funny and I was, there were a lot of references. I didn't get a lot of classical references and a lot of, uh, French history that just didn't ring true to me or not that it didn't ring true, but that it wasn't, I am not familiar with it. So, um, I did have to kind of glaze over the Latin and, um, get from it what I could, but I'm glad I read it. So I'm really appreciative that I actually was able to read it and get through it and enjoy it. And now I'm done. And will I read more of Victor Hugo? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I really loved his style as much as I would love some other classic authors, but uh, I did it. So yay. Another novel that I read recently was called Florence Adler Swims Forever. And it is about a Jewish American family in Atlantic City. It takes place over the course of one summer. Each chapter is about a different character in the book. So there are, there are like six characters that they focus on, that the novel focuses on, and it rotates from character to character by the chapter. And I'm not spoiling anything by saying in the very first chapter, there is a very tragic and unexpected death. And from that death, everything goes from there for the rest of the summer and how the death and secrets about that death affect each and every character that the novel is talking about. So it's set in 1934, and you get a lot of history about Atlantic City during that time, and then also what's going on in Europe with the rise of Hitler during the same time. So there's a lot of, you know, as the readers, we know bad things are coming for Jewish people in Europe and for the families that might have made it to the United States through the very onerous immigration process and what it was like for Jewish people to immigrate here and how much of a barrier the US government sets up to allow people to come. And so that was one of the focuses. Mostly it's about the tenderness between the individual characters for one another and the pressures of keeping secrets 
that bears down on each one of them too. This would be an excellent book club pick if your book club is looking for something where you get a variety of experience and perspective based around a, a, an historical event. Um, I really liked it. I think it would be great if more people actually read it. Okay, I finished my buddy read with Teresa. We read The Best American Short Stories of 2020. It was edited by Curtis Sittenfeld. And like all anthologies of short stories, there were some stories that really fell short and some stories that really rose to the top. And I think Teresa and I had a really nice time reading two stories a week. So it took a couple of months where we would read two stories and then chat on Voxer about what we thought about those stories. And you sometimes couldn't help but compare the two stories we read each week with each other and, you know, which one was stronger, which one was able to capture the moment that it was trying to capture, et cetera. But uh, there was a great story by Elizabeth, Elizabeth McCracken in there. She has a new collection of short stories coming out, I think in April. So um, that was really good. The Mary Gates skill story, This Is Pleasure, that I know a lot of people read a while back was in there. It's novella length and it was very strong. We had a really good discussion about that. Um, and there were other stories too that were just a one called Howl Palace uh, that was just fantastic. So if you could find that, I'm going to link it, uh, see if I can find the story, just print it on its own at wherever it was originally published. But that was a really good story about a woman who lives in Alaska and it's about her uh, love life. She's an older woman um, and she's trying to sell her house. And so there's an open house involved and all of the characters in the neighborhood are there and her backstory and she's funny and the characters are very, very interesting and fully alive on the page. So that was a really, really strong story too. And we had a great time. We will definitely do another buddy read together because we had a lot of fun. The last a glare on my glasses. I hope you don't mind. The last book I want to just briefly touch on is The Law of Innocence by Michael Connolly. I really like Michael Connolly's detective novels. This is a lawyer novel, so it's mostly set in the courtroom. The protagonist is Mickey Holler, the Lincoln lawyer, and in this particular novel, he is arrested for a murder he did not commit. So a lot of it takes place in the courtroom and in strategy strategy meetings and trying to figure out how they can find out who killed the person that was in the trunk of his car and get him out of jail and just all of the little tricks and problems and the weight of possibly going to be incarcerated for the rest of your life. And also COVID was happening. So he wrote it right in the moment of when COVID was happening a year ago. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I listened to the audiobook, and it was just, since I've read all of the uh, Lincoln Lawyer series, I enjoy seeing the progression of what happens to this character. So take it for what it is. It's not too long. And um, I, Michael Connolly is really good at what he does. That's all I have to talk about for now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.